In this video we are going to know about one of the approximate analysis method which is nothing but portal frame method. Here you can see that one of the example portal frame when we are using this portal frame means when the frame is subjected to lateral loads you can observe in this example problem 50 kN and 100 kN lateral loads are acting in different heights of 4 meters and 4 meters at different stories so we named it as a b c d so on for the different joints and we have different base spacings also coming to the assumptions it as we discussed it is a approximate analysis method so to get the re analysis results we have some assumptions in that first one is point of counter flexure is located at midpoint of each members it means we are assuming that point of counter flexure for all beams and columns is located at the midpoint of the member and coming to second internal columns of the frame is carrying twice the shear carried by the external columns let's say external columns are carrying the shear of v uh, and internal columns uh, carries the 2v of the shear and from the left side frame you can observe that uh, uh, every dot represents the point of counter flexor and as per assumption one point of counter flexor is at the midpoint of each beam and each column you can observe that and coming to portal frame analysis method to get the analysis results like shear force, bending moment and axial forces on the columns we have 5 steps of procedure to follow or to get the analysis results in this portal frame so we, we have to look into those 5 steps how to proceed for the analysis results in this portal frame Here this is the method of analysis by using portal frame method. Uh, in this first step we have to calculate the shears in the each and every column in different stories. Means we assumed that the point of counter flexure at the midpoint of the column. So shear in the columns at point midpoint we have to calculate and coming to the second point moments at the ends of the columns we have to calculate by using these shears which is calculated in step 1 and coming to the third step we have to calculate the moments at the beam ends by using the uh, previous step of uh, moment values of column ends followed by the third step in the fourth step we have to calculate the shear in the beams by using the equilibrium formula at the joints that means uh, moments in the beams uh, summation of the moments in the beams is equal to the summation of the moments in the columns by using this we have to calculate the shear in the beams and at the same time uh, in the fifth step we have to calculate the axial forces carried by the different columns by using above four steps so coming to the uh, calculation part as we discussed left side in the frame as per our assumption external columns are carrying the shear p in the story 2 and shear q in the story 1 and at the same time middle columns are carrying twice of those external column shears in the uh, different stories uh, in the first step as we discussed we have to calculate the shear in the columns so in the story 1 actually uh, total summation of the uh, shear is equal to the lateral load acting on that so 6q is equal to total lateral load 100 plus 50 150 so 6q equal to 150 and then we have to get the value of q 25 kilo newtons and internal shear 2q is the 50 kilo newtons and at the same time in the story one uh, total 6p is equal to 50 kilo newtons of the lateral load and we get the values of uh, p and 2p of the shear of different columns in the story 2 and coming to the step 2 we have to calculate the moments of the end of the columns so mea it means a moment at the end of the column ea you can observe the ea column in the portal frame which is in the which is the first column of story 1 which is similar to the column hd in the same story 1 so we have, we know that q is the shear force acting at the midpoint as per our assumption so moment is force into perpendicular distance so q into half of the column height 4 by 2 in the same way we have to get the all moment values and coming to the third step we have to calculate the moments at the ends of the beams let's consider joint i here we are using the equilibrium equation for the uh, calculation of moments at the ends of the beams so at the joint of i it means moments in the beam ij is equal to moments in the column ie so from the previous step we know the moments in the column ie so moments in by equating the moments in the beam ij we, we uh, with the moments in the beam ie we will get the moments in the beams and coming to the next joints let's say joint e 
it means summation of moments in the column IE and EA equal to the moments in the beam EF uh, so we will get in this manner we will get the all moments in the beams in different uh, stories actually we have six beams by equating each and every joint we will get the six moments in the six beams let's consider another joint which is nothing but joint F in this joint at this joint we have two columns and two beams which is intersecting at joint F which, which means two columns J F and F B we know the moments in the columns J F and F B from the step 2 and uh, we have to calculate the moments in the uh, beams EF and FG so by equating the moment summation of the moments in the columns JF and FB is equal to summation of moments in the column EF and FG so we know the moment in the beam EF uh, from the previous step we can calculate the moment in the other beam in this way we have to calculate the moments in all beams here you can observe that in the fourth step we have to calculate the shear in all beams so let us say we will consider uh, six shears in the six beams name it as R, S, T, U, V, W uh, continuously and we have to find out these uh, R, S, T, U, V, W values in the fourth step from the third step we know the moments in the beams at the same time we have to calculate the shear in the beams so uh, by using the moments we have to calculate the shear let's say moment in the beam ij is equal to r which is acting at the midpoint of the beam ij so midpoint it which is acting at midpoint means up moments in the ij equal to force r into half of the distance half of the span distance of ij which is nothing but four meters of the of two meters so r into two equal to moment in ij we know the value of moment in ij from the previous step so 2r equal to 16.66 and at the same time r equal to 8.33 kilo newtons uh, here we, we get that similar way we have to get the s value t value in a s value in the beam jk it which is uh, 5 meter span so half of the span means s into 2.5 is equal to moment in jk we know the value of moment in jk we, we will get the value of s and at the same time t value 4 meter span so 2 into t equal to m in k moment in kl which is nothing but we know the value of moment of kl so we will get the t value at the same way in the first story u v w also we will get the values and coming to the final step which is nothing but fifth step here we will get the axial forces acting on different columns in story 1 and story 2 so he in this frame you can see that from four steps we are calculated the shear in columns moments at the column ends moments at the beam ends and moments at the uh, shear in the beams so we have to we are we are decided to calculate the axial forces here here you can observe that we plotted individual columns so in the column iea you can observe that right side r is acting upward shear in the beam ij is acting upward and in the story one u is acting upward we know the values of those and as in the same way we will divide it we plotted four uh, parts of the four columns with the respective values and coming to calculate the axial forces take IA, IEA beam axial force in column IE which is in story 1 which is nothing but 8.33 kilometers in the upward direction you can observe that uh, R, R value 8.33 which is acting upwards which uh, that is the value of axial force in the column and coming to the bottom column EA uh, already from the top we, we are uh, bottom column is impacting 8.33 kilonewtons and uh, u value we have 33.33 kilonewtons so summation of those two will be the axial load on the column ae in the similar manner in the third column you right side first one you can observe that s is the force acting upwards at the right side and r is the force acting downwards at the left side and in story one v is the force acting upwards in the right side and u is the force is acting uh, left side downwards so to calculate the axial force in column jf which is lying in the story 2 s is acting upwards and r is acting downward the net force of these two will be the 2.066 kilonewtons which is acting downwards 
and axial force in column FB means already it is uh, loaded by 2.066 kN from the top column and again V is acting upward U is acting downward so net force of these three forces 2 is acting downwards these three net forces will be the 8.736 kN in the same manner you have to calculate the uh, force in the second and fourth column coming to the second column T is force acting upward right side and S is downward left side in the story 2 W is the right side upward and V is the uh, left side downward in the story 1 so coming to the axial forces in the story 2 column uh, which is nothing but uh, net force of T and S which is nothing but 8.33 upward is positive downward is negative we will consider that and 2.066 as it is upwards is the net force and coming to the axial force in the bottom column already net force 2.06 is upward is acting on that with that W and V is acting in the story 1 column so net force of these three values 33.33 plus 2.06 minus 26.66 coming to according to the direction of the force so 8.736 kN upward is the net, resu net resultant force acting on the bottom column of the second one and coming to the fourth same way uh, T is the left side downward acting W is the left side downward force in the story 2 and 1 respectively axial force in the top column which is nothing but 8.33 downwards is the net force there is no uh, alternate force and in the bottom force 33.33 plus up, uh, net force of the top story 8.33 summation of these two 41.66 kN downward is the net force acting on the bottom column in this way we will calculate the analysis results moments shear and axial loads on different members of the portal frame thanks for watching stay tuned